What's up? It's your boy Carcino here, and let's talk about it. This is the truth behind the Tupac and Scarface double CD. A lot of people didn't know that Tupac and Scarface was going to put out a double CD. Meaning one side was going to be a Tupac album, and the other side was going to be a Scarface album. Now, this deal was put in place after, what was it, like, man, I want to say like a, maybe two months before um, Tupac was killed. Pac was um, promoting and doing his thing. He's working on the Outlaws album. And he was talking to Scarface, and that's something he wanted to do. He wanted to put out a lot of double CDs. He wanted to put out a, a CD and then another one with actual videos for, like, all the songs. That was that was his dream. And that's when he went back and he, put, he pitched it to Suge, and they started going back and doing all those videos. That's why you start seeing videos after he passed. They were going to release a DVD. You know, at that time, or a VHS tape with the videos on them. You could actually get and buy the videos. And then that was going to be counted because they were going to put the disc with the uh, VHS tapes. So when you start seeing videos for All About You and How Do You Want It and all these songs, he was going back and filming videos for these other songs that the people loved and they just didn't do it. But since that money was already there, they like, we gonna make money off this. We just ain't gonna put it out there so the stations can make money. We gonna put these videos on, uh, you know, on a VHS and sell them. You know, so when he was doing All About You and all these other videos and he was going to make videos for basically all of his songs on Machiavelli. He was doing all of these projects. So when he was doing Machiavelli and making videos, the Live and Die in L.A. and all these other videos, he was getting ready to make that transition because he saw the future. Like, email had just came out around that time. So he was already aware and had an email for the first time. Yo, email me. <laughs> you know, it was crazy. You know, because all this stuff now we take for granted. But back then, you know, Pac didn't have all this stuff. I mean, it wasn't how it is now. And they was just like, yo, hit up the email. And, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's crazy now. You know, but it was like, yo, hit the email up. I'm going to check the emails when they come in. You know, so. He was he was ahead of his curve, you know, ahead of the time as far as the way he thought. So Suge talked to Jay Prince. And he was like, Jay, yeah, Pac was talking about, you know, doing some cross brand, you know, with Skyface. You know, we had put, put two of them together, you know, and put a project together where we got Scarface on one side and he want, you know, Machiavelli on the other side. So we're going to have Machiavelli, then we're going to have Scarface. I'm trying to talk to him to, to make that change. And uh, what James Prince was like, yeah, now that sounds great. I mean, I'm all about doing new things and making some moves, and this would be real good for rap a lot, be real good for Scarface and yeah, for Tupac, but I don't think nobody really knows him as Machiavelli, you know, I mean, he built his whole life being Tupac. I know when he over there at Machiavelli Records, you know, it's going to look like Tupac, but it just... I just think it's going to be a different thing, you know, it's, and I don't want people to get distracted about the project. So, 
if he put out a Tupac album and then we got a Scarface album on the other side, then I think that would make more sense. You know, and we can just come down to terms. We could talk about it. But, you know, if I'm going to the table, because I'm just thinking, what is the best investment to get, you know, ROI, which is return on investment, y'all. And she was, I feel, you know, I was saying the same thing. For a project that big, you know, he probably had to make it a Tupac project, you know, but but see, I understand what he's trying to do, because see, with Machiavelli, he get more money, you know, and it's all about his returns, you know, he won't get more money doing that, but I'm like, look, if, if Tupac's selling more than Machiavelli, then we might got to stick with Tupac. You know, just for just for this big project, you know, then then you can you know bridge that on in, into your Machiavelli, and then you know until Machiavelli catch up there with the Tupac name, you know. So yeah, we can sit down and work some things out. But yeah, that sounds about right. I'ma stay in contact, and then you got my information. I will give you guys a call, and we will set something up. So. Long story short, these things take time. Plus, Tupac was just in Houston talking to Scarface. He was at the radio station, and this is like probably two weeks before he died and got shot. So all of this went on the back burner, but they were still in like in a negotiational, you know, point when that happened. And once that happened, all those plans was was gone. You know, and at that time, Scarface was working on Smile and all them other songs he was doing with Pac because they were getting ready to do the project together. So, and it's crazy because it would have been huge. Scarface and Tupac together on an album, you got one side, Tupac, one side, Scarface. You know, some songs they together on the song. And Smile was like the first project, and they would have had more. And that was like his tribute to Pop. And Biggie died the week his album came out. So then the video ended up being a tribute to both. And that is Scarface's largest selling album to date. That was his largest selling album. So just imagine what that would have did for him had they went ahead and continued with that um, with that whole project. But then, even when he passed. Shug, it was many years later. Shug ran into James Prince again. And Shug was like, yeah, remember that idea you had? About, remember we was talking about doing stuff with Pac and, and Scarface? Yeah, we could still make that happen. And James Prince was, I'm all this. What, what we talking about? The same thing, putting out a double CD. Yeah, because see, the rope coming back bigger than ever. So I'm thinking, you know, we get the same thing you was talking about, the percents. We can work them numbers out. And, yo, know, this going to help Scarface. And this going to help, you know, Death Row. We're going to get back out there and we're going to put out a greatest hits. I'm going to do Tupac greatest hits and you had Scarface greatest hits on the other CD. We'll put them together, make a double CD. We just gonna do the greatest hits. So they sat down and they came to an agreement this time. When before they didn't quite come to an agreement. This time they come to an agreement. So this time everything was set to go. 
And the FBI came in and broke all of it up. Not because of they was finna do this joint deal together with the albums. Because they were all talking about partnering up to to own their end, own end of distribution. And they just couldn't have that. So all of that had to cease to exist and be broken up. As Rap a Lot, Death Row, and Murder Inc. were all investigated. Knowing they had nothing on Murdering or Rap a Lot. They just wanted to cripple. But Death Row, they had to cease operations. And that that's in the hours of what could have been. So tell me what you think, man. And don't forget to click the link in the description box. Leave a donation. Leave a message there. If you got a private message you want to send to me, go ahead and do it. And if not, just leave some in the comment section. And that'll be that.